Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Thank you for joining me today. It's that time of month when I get to make cards with the Stamps of Life card kit and I made 10 cards with the February kit. Before I get started with this card tutorial, if you're not already a subscriber, please click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. So this is the Stamps of Life February 2021 card kit and it's called the Take It Easy Collection. And as I go through the contents of the box, you'll see that it coordinates with the monthly club set, which is the Dragonflies to Stamp, which has these two dragonflies and several sentiments. And it also corresponds to the add-on set, which is called More Dragonflies to Stamp. So you'll see that several of the papers in the paper pad have dragonflies and there's just a lot of stuff within this collection pertaining to dragonflies. So in the card kit you always get your storage envelope which is great for holding your card stock sheets or if you wanted to store your card kit contents in the storage envelope you can. You also get a set of envelopes. And the cardstock colors are pixie which is a very light purple. You also get sunshine and bubble gum, which is a very light pink. You also get candy, which is the medium shade of pink. Mint chip, blue jay, which is a very light blue. You get lemonade, guava, which is the darkest pink, and four sheets of powdered sugar. So that is your color palette in this month's kit. You also get an idea card, which has different ideas for cards that you can make using this kit. And here's a look at the paper pad. So you can see all the beautiful flowers. And then here are the dragonflies that you can die cut with your shadow dies if you have those dies from the club set for the month. And if you don't have the dies and you want to use those dragonflies on your cards, you can always fussy cut those out of the paper pad. So you can see all the pretty colors. They correspond to the color palette and you get 24 double-sided sheets of the pattern paper. You also get these flowers as well as a word die which is the take it easy word die which comes with the words and the shadow as well as the stamp set with a small dragonfly and sentiments that say wishing you a lovely day and hello beautiful as well as the matching dies. You also get this set of dragonfly and flower chipboard pieces as well as two ribbon, one in yellow and one in pink, as well as these epoxy dots. So again, here are all the contents of the February 2021 card kit from the Stamps of Life. And if you're interested in finding more about the card kit, I will have a link in the description box below, which you can hop on over to the Stamps of Life website and take a look at the information regarding the kit. So I always like to start out these videos by finding the paper in the paper pad that I can use my matching shadow dies and die cut these out. So I am going to use the shadow dies to die cut out these dragonflies. Some of them are from the dragonfly to stamp set. And then there's one, the one on the very bottom I believe is from the more dragonflies to stamp set. So there are a total of 12 dragonflies that are already colored and you can use on your cards. You can also bring in your stamps if you want to make even more cards. For my first card I'm going to be doing some stamping and coloring as well with my alcohol markers. So I have a piece of Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth cardstock cut down to four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to be using the small dragonfly stamp that's in the card kit. And I'm just making a pattern on this paper. So I've also taken a piece of just scratch paper and put it underneath my um, paper that I'm stamping on just so that I don't, I don't get ink on the secret weapon, which is underneath that. And I'm just making a pattern. So notice that I'm just stamping in various positions. Some of the dragonflies are off of the cardstock layer. And then some, the ones in the middle, you see the whole dragonfly. And because I'm going to be doing some coloring with alcohol markers, I am using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp. And again, I'm using the Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth cardstock because when you color with alcohol markers, you want to make sure that the ink doesn't smear as you're coloring. So here I'm using my Arteza 
Everblend Art Markers, and I'm actually using two colors that are not even in a color family, and I'm trying to blend those together, and I'm actually getting between the pink and the teal that I'm using, I'm getting the color purple, which is really pretty. So I'm actually using the fuchsia is the pink, and the turquoise is that teal color, and when you blend those together, you'll get the purple. And then for the yellow, I'm using saffron yellow and sapphire yellow. So I'm only going to be showing the coloring of these two dragonflies because all of them are going to be the same so I'm going to eliminate the rest of that coloring just to save some time on this video. I will link down below the markers that I'm using as well as um, the colors. So I know some of you picked up these Arteza Everblend markers so I'll put those colors down in the description box. So here I'm just adding some epoxy dots just trying to figure out where I want to place them and these epoxy dots they're almost like a silver um, just like a silver epoxy dot. And then I'm gonna layer that on the sunshine paper. And that sunshine cardstock is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And then after I layer that on the sunshine paper, that will be layered on to the guava cardstock, which the guava cardstock measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then that will be layered onto an A2 size card base. An A2 size card base also measures four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I'm gonna go in with my Spectrum Sparkle Clear Overlay Pen and just put some glitter on those dragonfly wings. So that pen just adds a touch of shimmer and it makes it really, really pretty. So here's the final card. And moving on to card two, I am using my border die and die cutting this floral print. I first cut that flower paper down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and then I cut that border out. And I was gonna use the reverse side, but then after I die cut it, I must have had ink on my fingers and I got ink on the pattern. So I just flipped that pattern paper over and I'm going to use the reverse side of that on this card. So here I'm stamping out a sentiment onto an A2 size card base and the sentiment is from the card kit wishing you a lovely day and I'm going to go ahead and add that pattern paper right above there and then I'm going to bring in one of the large dragonflies that I die cut out of the paper pad and also put some ribbon around the top of this card using the yellow ribbon, just tying it there in a knot. And then I'm gonna add some of my flowers from the chipboard pieces to the centers of some of those circles in the paper pad, and then glue down that dragonfly. I am also gonna be bringing in my Spectrum Sparkle Clear Overlay Glitter Pen and add to the dragonfly. And then I decide to come in and add some very small silver little gem epoxy dots to this card to accent it. I thought about adding those all underneath that swirl, but I decided that would be too much. So I'm just adding a few there to the right hand corner. And that pretty much completes this card. And then for my next card, I'm gonna be bringing in the jar dies, which is this fun mason jar. It's one of the older sets from the Stamps of Life. And I'm stamping it out on some of the candy cardstock. And I'm just using some cloud ink. I believe it was the cloud ink, which is a light gray. It was either cloud or storm. I'm not sure if it was the lighter or darker, but I stamped it out on the candy cardstock and then I die cut it out with the smaller jar die. So it's not the shadow die that I use, it's the smaller one that you use for paper piecing. And then once I had that die cut, I'm taking my craft knife and I'm just cutting out the center. So when you die cut that mason jar, it actually leaves a little embossed line around that edge that I'm cutting. So I'm just following along the line and then just cutting out the center. And I thought it would be really cute to make it look like there were dragonflies in the mason jar. So I'm going to be using the dragonfly pattern paper and die cutting that out with the same jar die that I used to cut out the top layering piece. So that way they fit exactly on top of each other. So the top piece in pink will be glued right on top of the one that I cut out with the dragonflies. And I think that turned out so cute. So I'm just inking up the edges and you can see all those cute little dragonflies in there. Now I am using the pattern paper with the smaller dragonflies. There is another sheet of pattern paper that has larger dragonflies, but I wanted to be sure that all of those cute little dragonflies showed up in that jar. 
And then I just stamped out the lid from the stamp set and then I stamped that onto some cloud cardstock and I cut that out. And then I backed that mason jar up on a shadow layer which is cut out of the powdered sugar cardstock. So next I die cut this mint chip pattern paper out of a dotted oval die and inked up the edges with the mint chip ink. And I stamped out the sentiment, Hello Beautiful, on some of the powdered sugar cardstock and just cut that down to size with my scissors. If you wanted to use a paper trimmer, you definitely can do that to make sure it's straight, but I just chose to use my scissors. And I am going to ink up the edges of that Hello Beautiful sentiment. And I am using the mint chip ink to do that. So it has a little bit of green tint to the edges. And then I'm just going to add that down at the bottom. Now that yellow pattern paper is measured at four by five and a quarter. And by the way, I will have all of these measurements in my blog. So you can hop on over there. If you want to replicate any of these cards, you'll have the measurements as well as all the additional supplies will be linked there as well. So I am bringing in some of these flowers from the card kit. I did peel off the double-sided adhesive foam that was on the back of these flowers because I wanted to adhere them flat to the mason jar. However, I am going to, after I add glue to the back of the mason jar, I am going to add that one little piece of adhesive foam back to the side of that flower just so that it adheres flat to that oval underneath. I also want to make it look like some of the dragonflies escaped from the mason jar. So I'm taking that same pattern paper and just fussy cutting some of these smaller dragonflies. I did not want to use the larger dragonflies because it just, it wouldn't look right. The, the size would not be proportional. So um, I'm using the same size dragonflies by using that same pattern paper that I put in the mason jar. So just fussy cutting a few of those out because I wanted to include some of those on the front of this card. I also made sure to fussy cut three different styles of those dragonflies because I did not want all identical dragonflies. So that entire layer is going to go onto a piece of candy cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then that entire layer will go on an A2 size white card base. And that will complete this card. So for my next card, I'm going to be bringing in another older set. This is the Mushrooms to Stamp set. And I'm also bringing in the solids for mushrooms. So I'm stamping out some of my mushrooms in just some black ink. I think I'm using the licorice ink onto some powdered sugar cardstock. That is the outline of the mushrooms, which was from the Mushrooms to Stamp set. And then I'm bringing in the solids for mushrooms, which allows me to stamp out the actual pattern or solid fill for the mushroom. So it allows me not having to color, eliminates a lot of coloring that I don't have to do. The only coloring that I'm doing is just bringing in a yellow marker and just coloring the centers of this mushroom. There is a stamp in that set that you can use to color some of these circles, but I'll show it here in just a minute and you'll see that the stamp, it's not shaped for the side. So you see the, the, the circles that are on the side and on the bottom, there's not one that's just a half oval. So I just decided to go ahead and just color those circles. So here I'm stamping out some smaller mushrooms as well as putting some fill. Some of the fills have dots and you can see that yellow fill for the center mushroom has some dots on it, which is really fun. And then I'm just going to use my shadow dies, die cut those out, as well as I'm using some grass that I brought in from the rounded corner step card. I die cut the grass with some mint chip cardstock and just inking up the edges to add some dimension. Now there is a grass die in the mushroom dies, but the grass die is not as wide as this one. And because I'm making this a landscape card, the grass from the mushroom set would not fit lengthwise along the bottom of this card. So that's why I chose to use this die instead. So I'm just adding that there to the bottom. This piece of yellow flowered pattern paper measures five by three and three quarters. And I made sure that I left some space there on the left side so I could tuck that mushroom behind the grass so I didn't put glue all the way at the top of the grass over there on the left. So I'm just creating a cute little scene 
There's not too much involved with this scene, just a few little mushrooms and some grass and a dragonfly. I do use a stitched oval to die cut the sentiment. So I stamp out the sentiment in that oval and then I realize that oval is a little bit too large. So I come in with a smaller stitched oval and just die cut right over top of that. And then that looks perfect. It's sized perfectly. So go ahead and glue down the rest of those elements to that card front. I am bringing in one of the larger dragonflies to fill up that space and I'm also bringing in some little pink gems from my stash and then I'm going to add that layer onto some candy cardstock. The candy cardstock measures five and three eighths by four and one eighth and then that goes on an A2 size card base and I'm also bringing in my Spectrum Nor. It's the Spectrum Sparkle Glitter Pen just to add some glitter and that completes this card. For my next card, I'm going to turn this one into a sympathy card. I never seem to have a sympathy card on hand when I need one, so I figured this is a perfect set to make a sympathy card with. So I'm using another stitched oval and stamping out the words with sympathy. That is from the Sympathy to Stamp set from the Stamps of Life. I use the second largest scalloped rectangle die in the die set to die cut this mint pattern paper. Layered that onto a piece of lemonade cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I die cut two of the swirl dies from the card kit out of the powdered sugar and pixie cardstock. I decided to ink up the edges of this sentiment with some pixie ink, and then I realized that the pixie ink did not show up very well, so I switched over to the lemonade ink, which that showed up much better, so I was very pleased with that. So I'm gonna add those swirls, just kinda layer them underneath that sentiment. Add the sentiment there, right on top. I'm gonna bring in a dragonfly. That dragonfly is going to be there towards the top, but before I do that, I will be bringing in some of these flowers from the card kit and then add the dragonfly, and then add that to an A2 size card base. I think this is really pretty. I love this sympathy card. And then I add some of my very small silver gems to the middle of some of those flowers, and then add a couple down on the sentiment. And then for the middle, I stamped out the sentiment on another stitched oval and that sentiment is my absolute favorite from the stamps of life when it comes to sympathy cards and it says those we love don't go away they walk beside us every day unseen unheard but always near still loved still missed and very dear and that is from the sorry for your lost stamp set for this next card i have a piece of purple pattern paper that measures four by three and five eighths and I have the top piece, which is the stripe paper, which measures four and one and three quarters. Those are layered onto a piece of lemonade cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of this um, pink ribbon from the card kit just around the intersection where those papers meet. I'm just gonna put some double-sided adhesive glue on the back just to keep that ribbon down. I also cut out an eyelet scallop circle out of lemonade and a stitch circle out of the bubble gum cardstock and I also die cut the take it easy word die. This is from the card kit. Notice it's three different words. It does come with a shadow so you can put it on a shadow and if you put it on the shadow it will be a all one line but I chose because I'm using it in the scalloped circle I wanted it on three separate lines and I didn't want to use the shadow so I just adding it there to the circle I'm adding a dragonfly towards the bottom and I'm also going to be bringing in some of the flowers from the card kit and add those there at the bottom I'll add that entire layer to an A2 size card base in white and that completes this card for my next card, I have a piece of guava cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. This yellow pattern paper measures one and seven eighths by five and three eighths. And I have two pieces of these scallop borders that I cut out of white or the powdered sugar cardstock. And that die is actually from a previous card kit. I did trim off the excess scallop border that extended beyond the edges of that guava cardstock. And then I just stamped out the sentiment, thank you. That sentiment is from the um, Dragonfly to Stamp set. And then I'm using the chipboard dragonflies to add three of them inside of this vertical strip. And then that entire layer will go on an A2 size card base. 
I do bring in some white epoxy dots from my stash. I believe these were from last month's card kit. And then that completes this card. For my next card, I'm bringing in one of the flowers from the More Love Bugs to Stamp set. And I'm coloring it up with my Arteza Everblend markers. I did stamp these stamps onto some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth cardstock. And I stamped them with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink because that is what I use when I color with alcohol markers so that the um, ink does not smear when I color. So the colors that I'm using for the purple are the lilac and the wisteria purple. For the pinks, I'm using cherry blossom pink and aurora pink. For the blues, I'm using pale aqua blue and sky blue. The yellow is sapphire yellow and saffron yellow. And then for the pinks, pale green and spring green. I want you to notice for the center where the yellow is of that flower, I did color the whole thing in my lightest color yellow and then used my darker yellow just to apply a bunch of dots just to add some texture to the center of that flower. And then I'm gonna color up some of these dragonflies. I'm just using two on this card and I'm using the same colors from the flower so that everything is uniform, same colors, same color purples, same color pinks, and same color yellows. I'm using a white gel pen, just adding a few dots to those dragonflies just to add some more um, texture, some more definition, and just some more sparkle, I think, to the dragonflies. So you'll see a closer look here. So you can see what that looks like with the dots. And then I'm going to die cut those out with the matching dies. I'm also using a grass border die from the borders set, and I die cut that out of the mint chip cardstock. However, I did ink up the edges in the kiwi ink because I wanted a little bit darker since I'm using a lot of pastels in this card. I'm going to glue that grass to the bottom of that blue pattern paper. The blue pattern paper measures four and five eighths by three and three eighths. So I'm just going to glue that down to the very bottom and then I'm going to snip off the edges and I'm also going to make sure that my flower tucks in behind that grass. So make sure that you're able to tuck your flower in behind there and that you don't put um, glue all the way up at the edge of that grass when you add that grass. So I am creating a cute little scene on the front of this card layer. So I'm going to have the two dragonflies there and then I'm going to stamp out a sentiment. I just want to make sure I have enough room so I didn't glue down the dragonflies yet. Just wanted to make sure I had enough room here and where I wanted to put them. I go ahead and add glue to the back of the dragonfly that's going to be at the top. And notice I did not press it all the way down. I just want to make sure that, that I'm still going to have enough room there for that stamp. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp out the wishing you a lovely day. And then I'm going to add the second dragonfly down towards the bottom. And then I'm going to put that layer onto a scalloped rectangle um, cardstock layer that was cut out of the lemonade cardstock. And then that entire layer will go on an A2 size uh, card base. I'm going to add a few clear epoxy dots. So I'm adding, you can't barely see them, but they just add a little bit of something without being overpowering because like I said, they are clear. And then that will complete this card. For my next card, I'm bringing in the Die Grid 2 die set from the Stamps of Life and using some of the scraps that I had left over. And I'm bringing in, it's the same pattern paper. You can see it has the same flower on it, but in different colors. And I'm going to use this grid. It has the four rectangles. Sorry that the bottom part is cut off the screen. But I'm just adding some washi tape to keep that paper attached to that grid so that I can run it through the die cut machine. And when that comes out of the die cut machine, I'm just going to take those rectangles out. And then I'm going to take that same die and die cut a piece of the Blue Jay cardstock, which will give me the frame. The middle pieces I don't need, so I can just set those aside 
if I need that cardstock in the future. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back. I did die cut a dotted rectangle die out of the candy cardstock, and I'm just layering that frame onto that dotted rectangle layer. And then I'm going to piece in all of these rectangles that I cut out of the pattern paper. Before I add that blue one in, I am going to stamp out the sentiment thank you. And then I'll go ahead and add that there to the bottom right. And I'm going to be bringing in two dragonflies. So I'll go ahead and add those there. And then I'm going to bring in a few of the pink flowers. I do take off the double-sided adhesive foam off the back of those because I don't want them to stick up too much. I'm just trying to think about these cards being mailed and they already have um, some dimension on them with the two layers there, the white layer and then the pink layer. So that white layer gives the extra dimension. So I wanted to keep them kind of flat. So just removed the double-sided adhesive tape. And then I do add a few of these little silver gems. Just was trying to decide how I wanted to put them, whether I wanted to put them in a straight line or not so I decided not to <laughs> and then I just add some glue to the back and add that to an A2 size white card base and that completes this card and then for my final card I'm going to bring in the flower flip it die set and I'm bringing in this dragonfly paper and I'm going to cut the layering pieces out of the dragonfly paper and I cut the card base out of the pixie cardstock and just a little tip when you're die cutting these layering pieces when you're using directional paper like I am, so the paper actually has a direction to it, make sure you're looking at the die and wherever it says the stamps of life on the die, that is the top of the die. And you want to make sure that the top of the die is facing the direction that you are cutting. Because if you have the die upside down, you're going to end up cutting your cardstock upside down and then it's not going to layer properly. I've done that before, so <laughs> just a little tip. And then I did ink up the edges of that dragonfly paper with some lemonade ink. And I die cut the large flower in the lemonade and the candy ink and inked it up, inked up the edges of those with the corresponding ink colors as well. This die set has several flower dies in it and I'm just using this one flower die because this is gonna be the center of that Flip It card. So I am going to layer the pink layer on top of the yellow. That's going to be the front. And then I also die cut another shadow layer out of the lemonade cardstock, which will be for the back side where you can actually write your message. I didn't want to put another piece of the candy cardstock on top of that because you wouldn't be able to write your message on top of the on top of the actual layered flower. So I go ahead and add ink to the edges of these layering pieces for the sides of my flip it and add those down to the card base and then I add the flower to the front and then I'm going to add that lemonade single piece of the shadow layer to the back. I love these flip it cards because they're so quick and easy. You just really have to decide on what pattern paper you want to use and deciding on the pattern paper is probably the hardest part of it. <laughs> so here I die cut the word hello. This is from the jar dies. It has a stamp and die set that matches and I die cut that out of the candy and the lemonade card stock. And then I have some of these dragonflies which I previously colored. I didn't want to show the coloring again because I've already shown coloring on this. And the one in the middle of the flower, I just put it smack dab right there in the center of the flower. And then the one up in the top right, I layered on a piece of lemonade with a shadow layer. I didn't want to put a shadow layer on the center flower because I didn't want to take away from the pattern in that flower. I am putting some, just some pink gems on here just to add some little bit of bling to this card. I did... Um, tie a bow in the bubblegum ribbon and just adding some hot glue and adding it there to the top. And that completes this card. So here's another look at all of the cards that I made with the Stamps of Life February card kit. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which card was your favorite. And if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. And if you like card tutorials such as these, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more card making inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.